Bristol is a city of youthful energy and is one of the most sustainable cities in the UK. A short drive from the city center is an area of unimaginable beauty. And that is our destination for today's episode. Surrounded by a walled garden, the Epicurean might be the most perfectly located restaurant we've ever seen. Not only is the Michelin Green Star holder surrounded by an organic farm, but beyond the wall garden is the most magnificent view of Somerset and the Mendip Hills. Head chef Mark McCabe is changing how we see sustainable gastronomy. He took over from the previous head chef in 2019. Today he runs one of the most exciting kitchens in the country, and I can't wait to show it to you. Climate Story features pioneers in sustainability from around the world. Don't forget to subscribe for weekly episodes. My name is Rashad Mehta. This is Climate Story Episode 11. The Epicurean, Bristol. Let us know in the comments what inspired you about their climate story. I don't like to be snobby when it comes to ingredients. You know, if it's a swede or a beetroot or caviar, they all have the same worth. They're all equally delicious. They all have a reason to be grown and to nourish us. It's apple marigold. Such an interesting flavor. Food here is heavily centered on the garden. The philosophy of the restaurant is about providing a snapshot of the garden and this area, the season that we're in. It all has to work together for us. It's a, it's a really key part of the philosophy. And another thing we want to communicate to the guests is, is that opportunity to slow down a little bit. Dinner here is a long affair. It's about four hours. And we purposely don't turn tables so that people have the chance just to come slow down and reconnect a little bit. I like to support farmers and producers who are uh, an outlook on the world that matches ours. We do use dairy, we do use meat and fish. We're quite unapologetic about that. I think it's really important to support farmers who care about the soil regardless of what they're farming because ultimately if they're not there big ag has won and we just end up with an industrial farm and so we use small scale uh, meat producers uh, small scale dairy and anyone that I can visit and go and speak to and feel confident that they treat their their animals uh, with the respect that they should this time of year for us is all about sprinting, it feels. Constantly trying to keep up with what's ripe and what's ready. Or we try and use as much from the garden as we can all year round. This summer period is just preserving as much as we possibly can. Jams, jellies, vinegars, sugars. Anything we can pack away and squirrel away for for the winter period when it's a bit leaner. 14 courses of root vegetables can be a bit of a hard sell sometimes, so it's nice to have little, little pops of summer available to us. But it sure does add to the workload. So when guests arrive, we'll have someone down at the bottom of the hill to greet them. First snack of the evening, uh, depending on what that is, we like to do something over fire in the garden. So at the moment we have uh, like a spring herb taco uh, that we cook over the barbecue uh, just to provide a snapshot of the garden as it is today. Everything that goes into the taco is picked just before service um, and it sort of gives us that chance to make that connection really between the restaurant and the garden because people don't always put two and two together. Then we bring them into the bar where we'll have another couple of snacks sort of incredibly complex and interesting cocktails. 
bring them through to the restaurant for the rest of the meal, uh, followed by a, a variety of other delights. So the, the menu at the moment is so fluid. We're in the height of summer. Everything's fresh, everything's ready and sort of bursting. Dishes tend not to stay around for a huge amount of time. You're always trying to strike that balance between getting something perfect which maybe takes a couple of days, a couple of weeks to get right in terms of recipe, but also capturing something as it is at its best. So we've got these incredible red Florence onions in the garden at the moment. Super sweet, uh, really juicy, quite mild in flavor. Blacken them in the skins over the barbecue uh, so they steam in their own juices. Then we strip the skins off and make a broth with the skin. Uh, with a little dried mushroom, some, some seaweed for that umami. And then we season that broth uh, with some preserved plum juice. The onion itself, we portion up. We've got a little onion puree on the dish as well. Uh, we glaze it with uh, a fresh plum juice, we sweeten slightly. Top it with slices of fresh plum. And then finally top it with that apple marigold that I showed you earlier. So you get this really unctuous onion, big deep flavour from the broth and then that fresh plum, a little bit of the pop of herb. I think it's sort of, it's exactly what we are about here. You know, it's, it's simple, it showcases the ingredient uh, and I think it's quite elegant as well. Food is almost entirely controlled by corporations. I believe in a future that gives back control over food to people. It shouldn't be unusual for me to be able to offer food from a garden, from a small farmer whose name I know, from a cheesemaker who I'm friends with. Everyone should have access to that kind of food. And I fully believe that we are capable of producing healthy, nutritious food for everyone, not just those who can afford to come to a restaurant like this. And remember that it is everything to us. This is our climate story. Good job. That's amazing, thank you. Really enjoyed it. You too. You're a philosopher.